cassette, cruise control, and driver's airbag. All standard features for $16,995. That's $4,000 less than a similarly equipped Dodge Intrepid ES. Get into the midsize 94 Supreme Special Edition sedan or coupe for $16,995. More car for your money. From your local Oldsmobile's dealer. Jackie Walker and Rick Pfeiffer are News 4's night team tonight at 11. I tax you, you pay me. Let's create more dependency. <laughs> so much we got a lot of fun on tonight's show some serious stuff too have you heard about the the Qantas Airlines ad the Australian airline have you seen it maybe the ad shows a an airline seat a guy sitting in an airline seat on the beach and the implication is that uh, you're sitting there on the beach in Australia and this is a wonderful place to go and all that but uh, guess what it is not Australia it is Hawaii they have deceived people. They got NBC News investigating the story here to see if there's anything. <laughs> but I understand NBC is not interested because nothing blew up in the ad. Hey, I got to tell you something. About, uh, I guess it was in May, I just was overworked. I, was, I, I just felt oppressed. I felt underneath the weight of the world. I had no time to myself. This was in the midst of the budget battle, you'll remember, and we were going to town on television and on radio, and everybody, it seemed, was calling and wanting interviews, and I was saying, I finally put a moratorium on it. I said, I am doing no more interviews, and I did it on this basis. <coughs> I said, I got three hours on radio every day, <coughs> it's 15 hours a week, and I got a half hour on TV every day, that's two and a half hours a week, so if I add that up, I get, and because I went to school in America, so it's risky, I may not know this. Um, 17 and a half hours a week I'm on the air and I've got that's a lot of time and as you know there are no guests here it's just me this show is not about what America thinks it's not about me trying to say what I think you think it's about what I think it's about what I'm interested in and I figured why do I need to give interviews to people who are then going to chop up and edit what I say and maybe have it come out in a way that's not at all representative of what I think when I've got all this airtime. So just like, shut down, no more interviews. And I have had more press and publicity this summer as a result of the no interview policy than I ever had when I was doing interviews. Here's, here's a, just a couple things. Look at this. This is Time Magazine today. There's the cover story, Voice of America. Now, that cover is a little bit misleading. That's me and Howard Stern, uh, noted shock jar. It's about like putting William F. Buckley on a cover with Al Goldstein or Larry Flint. Uh, but inside, when you get in there, I, I just I want to show you some of the things. Now, the reason I, I, I bring this to your attention is because who would have ever thought uh, that a major national publication such as Time would dare to get it right about me? And about you. I mean, people who uh, listen to or watch this show and agree with what I say. Here are just some quotes that they put in this story. He has real influence. The power, says Clinton White House consultant Paul Begala, to put something like Zoe Baird on the radar screen. But it is a good part of what makes Limbaugh the most popular broadcast commentator of the age. Maybe ever. And Limbaugh does not officially consider all feminists feminazis, only those who are enthusiastic about abortion. This is a major, major thing, because one of the constant criticisms of me is that I say that all women are feminazis, and people who know better run around and say that. Now, with this mainstream, traditional, dominant media culture publication setting the record straight, I never thought this would happen. Listen to this, which is not to suggest that Limbaugh's ideological sincerity and coherence are anything less than total. He plainly believes what he says and mostly argues his case lucidly, particularly by radio standards. Nor in this post-Reagan age can he be called an extremist. I mean, this is climbing nearly to the top of the mountain. It is, it's incredible. 
but in fact his views on abortion are relatively nuanced uh, so uh, this is something that I just I, I wanted to point out to you because it's monumental and also I think that it says a lot uh, too about about the audience uh, there's there's no reason to aggravate the readers of this magazine who also listen to the show by pumping out a bunch of things about me and therefore you which aren't necessarily true there's another magazine that uh, is not nearly as widely uh, read but it, it in this case it ought to be that is the new republic november 8th issue and that is a cover story on the politics of irony and it says are rush limbaugh and david letterman the same person <laughs> <coughs> now before before here go back to the cover if we can i want to point i want people to take a note of the cover shot half of that face is me and half of that face is letterman and they make the point that uh, this audience, the, the audience of this TV show is far more diverse than even Letterman's. And they get the fact that this, uh, this show last season was in many places uh, outdrawing Letterman's show when he was on NBC. No big deal, uh, because we all know it, but the fact it's now been reported, this is the one thing, you know, all these late night uh, uh, sh uh, articles, late night TV show articles and newspapers for the past year, this show is constantly left out. Here now is a cover, now the New Republic is the liberal version of National Review. I mean, it is a liberal journal of opinion. It has about 130,000 subscribers, and we're going to try to triple that or so by people wanting to buy this copy of it. It's really, really a good story, all about the, the history of, uh, of TV. Now, let me show you a couple things that ran in Texas. There's big, big news in Texas. All this, by the way, is, is I don't know if we can call it the mainstreaming of Rush Limbaugh in this show, but, but it is... Um, uh, it, all of these three things that I'm showing you tonight are signs of overcoming major obstacles now uh, amongst these traditional institutions which heretofore have simply relegated me and you to some extreme right-wing side uh, of the aisle. And you know how people are always saying, well, you can't listen to people who listen to talk shows. I mean, they're not really Americans. They're just being influenced by these conservative guys. This gets us over that hump. Corpus Christi Caller Times is the name of the newspaper. Poll, Limbaugh carries clout. Texans worry about violence and crime. Hart Hanks is a polling unit in Texas. Rush Limbaugh, the conservative television talk show host, carries nearly as much political clout in Texas as former President George Bush and Ross Perot, according to the Hart Hanks poll. Look at this headline. Many Texans taking Limbaugh seriously. You can just hear them shuddering in the newspaper offices when they have to write that headline. Uh, the, the, the thing is about this, they think that this is new, that people are taking me seriously. And even in the Times story, the Times story says that one of the reasons that I am a cut above or different than ordinary or other mere conservative political commentators is that I have a sense of humor. Everybody says, everybody says, yeah, these conservatives, it's really weird to find one with a sense of humor. I think it's weird to find a liberal with a sense of humor, frankly. <laughs> I think, you know, I think, I, and I don't know where this all got started. Ooh. Nice, uh, nice color combo, wouldn't you say, Sandy? Uh, I, I, I don't know where all this got started, because to me, liberals are always wringing their hands. Oh, look at the world's ending. Oh, gee, nobody's nice. Oh, there's no compassion. Oh, people are dying. Oh, no. We're the last economy in the worst of the Oh, no. And, and I think there are, I know a lot of conservatives. Bill Bennett's hilarious. A lot of people are just funny as they can be. A couple conservatives aren't, but uh, anyway. The, the, the thing is, these people, many, lim, many Texans taking Limbaugh seriously, everybody in this audience has taken me seriously from the beginning. And that's why this show has gotten so big. And I want to thank you people in the audience. You mean more to me than I'll uh, probably ever mean to you. Now you I really do. And one of the, if I may, if I, if I can open up just a little, you know, I come to this show on my radio show, and I have been for the past five years on radio, and this is the second year on TV. I come to the show every day with my heart wide open, and my, my mind as honest as it can be about what I believe. And if I make a mistake, as you well know, we correct it at the beginning of each show and, and make a, a big deal about the fact that I got something wrong to correct it. I've always been serious. I have always uh, intended to be believed. I think this industry is all about communication. Uh, and so I want to thank you because what makes this show and the radio show so wildly successful, the most talked about media broadcasts in the world today, is quite simply because the people who have listened regularly and continue to now tune in, the new ones that we're discovering, know full well that everything here is meant seriously, and that's the true link to you and me. 
and the press is just now getting it. It's been a long time coming, but they are. Let, let me show you very quickly just the results of this poll that the Hart Hanks people took down there, so you can see. Uh, who has your ear in Texas? 26% Clinton, 16% uh, Bush, keep going, 15% uh, Little General, Ross Pro, hand grenade to haircut. <laughs> Look at me, Limbaugh, I've had a dole, Jimmy Carter, and uh, Gerald Ford, and others or don't knows, 18%. So, uh, hey, Texas, I love you, too. I mean, I, every time I go down there, I, uh, I have just the greatest time. We have something I promised on our last show, comparisons of Jimmy Carter's energy problem and Bill Clinton's health problem, or crisis, as they're creating them, and some fun stuff, too, following. So if you'll just be patient and stay right where you are, we'll be back with all the rest of it in just a moment. <laughs> is in the grip of a really tough cold. But he's about to break free with an effervescent rush of relief. Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Pills take time to dissolve, but Alka-Seltzer Plus is ready the moment you take it. Rushing powerful medicines to soothe your aches. Relieve your runny nose. Free your breathing. Nothing rushes relief like Alka-Seltzer Plus. look like this and not like this fix your hair fix your hair with hrs hrs has the hair assimilation process not a wig not a transplant but a non-surgical method of replacing lost hair replace a bald crown re-establish a frontal hairline it's not growing hair but it looks just like it hair assimilation can fix your hair swim exercise work out sweat wash and blow dry and do it all again hair assimilation from hrs the next best thing to growing hair the best way to fix your hair take it from me danny gare and fix your hair the hrs way in western new york or canada call 1-800-756-1818 for a free color brochure got the salt of the earth here in the front row of our audience. We show this guy sitting here. Can you get a shot of him? He's sitting there with his arms crossed. No. There he is. Give him the thumbs up. This is Tennessee. Way to, way to go. <laughs> okay. Now, last, I guess it was on Friday's show, I, uh, I promised that I was going to do a big deal to show you how the Carter presidency was brought down, really, by his insistence on totally altering the American way of life with his energy crisis. Remember that? People have forgotten it. And that's what paved the way for Reagan. Because that just added up to big government, huge, oppressive, bureaucratic government. And that's what opened the door for Ronald Reagan to move in. And the same opportunity exists today. There is a conservative, I don't say Republican, there is a conservative career just waiting to be made as a result of this health care plan plus this foreign policy mess that we're in. By the way, Clinton has engaged in one area of foreign policy there. He has some expertise, and that's calling out the National Guard to the nation's capital. Uh, he has... Uh, <laughs> that is foreign policy, if you ask me. He has successfully called out the uh, National Guard in Arkansas, and he wants to do it in the nation's capital. So finally, a foreign policy move that we know can trust his experience. More on that later. Let me show you from, this is a the story that was in the Wall Street Journal on Thursday. Daniel Cass, this is a brilliant piece. Uh, he is now policy director of the Project for the Republican Future. First, here are some things that came from the Carter energy crisis. These are some of the points that he manufactured and see if these sound familiar. Number one, he complained the United States was the only Western democracy without a national energy policy. Where have you heard that about health care? Number two, spoke darkly about the power of special interests. 
Where have you heard that? Does this all sound familiar? Number three, called in a prominent Republican, James Schlesinger, to help manage his policy efforts. Ever heard of David Rodham Gergen? <laughs> Number four, excoriated the oil industry for profiteering. They did the same thing in this administration to the pharmaceuticals industry. Number five, warned that failure to pass his plan could threaten our free institutions. Does that sound familiar? It's all Jimmy Carter. Six told the American citizens that they consumed too much energy. You know one thing I'm sick and tired of? Everybody saying, well, you know, the British, they pay $4 per gallon. And the, and, and the Belgians, they pay 5 50. That's their problem. Just because they do, doesn't mean I want to. What in the world? This outmoded notion of fairness. This outmoded notion of fairness. Why, the British, we've got to pay that. Leave them alone. If they want to make policies and spend that much money for gasoline and petrol, let them do it. But it's not a sign that we're doing something wrong. It's a sign that our market forces are far more beneficial to the consumers, us, than they are in Europe. Now, here were Carter's proposed solutions to his energy crisis. Follow me along, if you will. <laughs> Number one, taxes on gas-guzzling cars. Number two, regulation of natural gas. Number three, windfall profits taxes. You heard all of this before. Number four, creation of a Department of Energy. We're going to have a new health care board, folks. A new little health supreme court, if you will, is going to be up there to determining who can do what. Stand by tax on gasoline to be imposed if Americans use too much. And number six, attempting to change American habits, which is really what this whole thing is, is about here. They're trying to take one-seventh of our GNP, transfer it to government, blame you for the health care crisis, and then, and then come in and fix it themselves. And I just, I, I really got to stress to you that there's a Republican or conservative career just waiting to be made here. This is nothing new. It's a time-honored Democratic trick, and it failed the last time. It took 18 months to debate Carter's, Carter's energy crisis plan. It was so confusing, nobody understood it. Nobody could make hide nor tail of it. Same thing with, with Clinton's health care plan. So any chance we have to point out these similarities and, and problems we're going to do, and this is just the latest. It's a brilliant piece, Mr. Cass. Thanks for writing. It was in the Wall Street Journal. We have more right after this break. Don't go away. <laughs> Here's an opportunity for you to receive a free copy of National Review's special report on Rush Limbaugh. Hi, I'm Bill Buckley. I'm doing one of the things I've liked most to do since I was 13 years old. My favorite diversion, except for reading National Review. When you sail, you need to keep your eyes on the weather. National Review does that, keeps its eyes on changes in the world scene, political, economic, and cultural. My purpose in founding National Review was to give people an alternative to the single-voiced commentary now known as politically correct. Call the number on your screen. Try the magazine. If you don't like it, write cancel on the bill, and we'll refund you for all unmailed uh, issues. And you can even write me an angry letter. Call this toll-free number now, and we'll send you absolutely free National Review's special report on Rush Limbaugh. You don't go sailing without looking at the charts, looking at the barometer, and you shouldn't walk a block without checking in with National Review. Call 800-441-4949 for an 18-issue trial subscription to National Review for only $29.95. Call now. I'm Sal Folletta, candidate for Erie County Sheriff. You now have an opportunity to elect as your sheriff a person who started as a patrol deputy, serving in almost every division of the sheriff's department and rising to the rank of sergeant. A sheriff who will work with all the police agencies of Erie County to provide you with all the services you deserve and pay for. A sheriff who has no desire to seek any other elective office but to serve you as sheriff. Thank you and remember me on election day. I'm asking you to join me in supporting Sal Valletta for sheriff in the coming election. Sal has worked in virtually every division of the sheriff's department during the 20 years that he served the public as a law enforcement officer. He knows how the department works. He knows the legal requirements of the job. He has the plan to cut costs in a meaningful way. Thank you. watching Rush Limbaugh, the TV show, the uh, attacks on the institutions and traditions that have made this country great continue. You have probably no doubt heard by now that the uh, Girl Scouts have decided to uh, allow people to uh, substitute their own god 
or leave out God in the Girl Scout pledge if they so choose. Now, but wait, before you boo on this, just keep in mind that there was a vote in Minnesota, in Minneapolis on Saturday, 1,560 to 375 amongst Girl Scout uh, officials and members and leaders. This is not something that's been forced on them. Well, it is, I think, but, but at least as the story's been written, it's not something that's been forced on them from the outside. Now, I want you to see the Girl Scout pledge. And I, as it's a bunch of little Girl Scouts reciting their pledge, as it used to be. And I want you to watch this and find for me the trouble. Look at this and somebody pose for me after watching it, the threat to America. Here, watch. I, 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 Well, that's really subversive. I don't know if America can handle things like that. <laughs> you know what's going on? A bunch of moral relativists are getting hold, and, and they say that what we're trying to... Well, we're not, we don't want to embarrass our little girls who don't have the Judeo-Christian God. Uh, we don't want to embarrass... That's not what this is all about. This is the first move in eliminating God, and that's wrong. What these people ought to do if they don't like the way the Girl Scouts have been is just disband and form their own organization and run it the way they want rather than trying to take over these institutions which have been proven over the period of time to be fine, upstanding organizations which do no harm to anybody and in fact elevate its members. Bill Bennett, a friend of mine today, made a speech or a, uh, actually a statement uh, at a news conference on religious bigotry in Virginia politics. Anybody here from Virginia tonight in the audience? Uh, not here. The, uh, <laughs> well, I don't blame them. They're probably hanging their heads in shame. What's going on is George Allen, the son of the ex-football coach, is, is uh, running for governor against a woman named Mary Sue Terry. And Mary Sue Terry has, has learned that uh, Pat Robertson supports uh, George Allen. So she's running ads designed to say this guy's not qualified because Pat Robertson supports him. So Bennett's pointing out, hey, it's okay to be bigoted against religious people. And I want to read you his words, because these words say it all. Bill Bennett, I returned to Washington, D.C. the other day and read the front page of the Washington Post. Mayor Kelly wants to call out the National Guard because of the city's exploding murder rate. Senator Packwood is holding on to his diaries, which contain accounts of various sexual escapades on Capitol Hill. And I read about a sting on Montgomery County liquor stores where the problem is underage drinking. And still, there are people who believe that the greatest threat to the well-being of the Republic is too much religion? We are in the race between civilization and catastrophe. We have record murder and violent crime rates, huge increases in births to unwed mothers, educational decline, broken families, and a president who has established a record for broken promises. All of this, all of this, and we are told that the very religious are what we must fear? Religion is on the side of civilization. More people ought to begin to recognize that. You've got Mayor Kelly now wanting to call out the National Guard in D.C. What does that say about the people who've been running D.C.? I guess it's all those religious people in D.C. are causing the problems that you've got to call out the National Guard. They're trying to tear down our institutions, and those institutions which were participatory in the founding of this country. And it must not happen, folks. We've got a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Well, I'm glad the president's doing something about health care reform. Mm, he's right. We need it. But some of these details... Like a national limit on health care? Really? The government caps how much the country can spend on health care and says, that's it. So, what if our health plan runs out of money? There's got to be a better way. There is a better way to reform. Call this toll-free number for the facts. Call today. Rust. What it can do to the outside of your car, weak, neglected antifreeze can do to the inside. You need Presto. No matter what happens to the outside, Prestone protects the inside. Prestone stops the rust that stops your car. Save 50% on quality carpet when you buy direct from the mill, S&S Mills. Call now to receive a free video and discover how you can cut out the middleman and save 50%. Call 1-800-42-DIRECT. That's 1-800-42-DIRECT. Tough. Smart. Definitely not one of the boys. Rap. 
She took on the county hall crowd and won, fighting the Gorski tax hike and passing real fiscal reform. As our state senator, Mary Lou Rath will oppose wasteful Albany spending, and she'll take on Cuomo and his taxes in order to spur jobs and economic growth. Rath, she's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dennis Gorski. She'll go head-to-head -head with Mario Cuomo. Elect Rath, state senator, a proven tax fighter. Old Man Winter is just about here. A recreational warehouse has what you need to keep nice and warm, like a super efficient wood-burning pellet stove. Pellet stoves are easy to load, easy to install, and will slash your fuel bills this year. Also, recreational warehouse offers a complete line of fireplaces, wood-burning, and gas-fired, with 10 models to choose from. Already have a fireplace? How about a set of ceramic gas logs? And don't forget to check out our complete line of wood-burning stoves. From cast iron box stoves, wood-burning furnaces, boilerplate, high-efficiency models, or stovepipe. Recreational warehouse has it all. 555 River Road, North Tonawanda. There was no problem with the insurance, but when the car came out of the shop, I told Joe here that it just didn't look right. You see, that's where Nationwide's Blue Ribbon Claim Guarantee kicks in. I gotta say, Nationwide really went to bat for me. It got fixed. Satisfaction guaranteed in writing. Joe was right. That makes a big difference. One heck of a difference. Nationwide is on the side. Your local Nationwide agent, Steve Carolis in Amherst and Michael J. Gallego in Lackawanna. Uh, playing pop quizzes here with Deborah. I'll let you in on it on another show. <laughs> How many of you have seen the latest Hyundai ad? Everybody's all upset. Men's groups are upset because this ad is sexist and it features direct sexual mentions. If you haven't seen it, here it is. It's revolutionary. Watch this. Thank you. Must be overcompensating for a shortcoming. Now, he obviously has feelings of inadequacy. If it's true about men who drive flashy cars... This guy really has something to hide. Then if a guy chooses a car because it's durable and dependable, wouldn't uh, the opposite be true? I wonder what he's got under the hood. Hey, I think that is a great ad. I think that is creative. I wish we had that ad on this show. Uh, in fact, here's the difference. Most guys, given this, I would love to be driving that Hyundai if women are going to think of him that way. That's the difference in men and women. Women are going to say, how dare you think of me that way, you cad, you pig. But men, oh, you wondering about what I got under the hood? <laughs> Tell you what, if it were me in that Hyundai, I would be popping out of the hood. You wouldn't have to open it to see what's in it. We'll be back on another show. See you later. Bye-bye. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. The authentic GOP baseball cap. Wear your true colors with this wool blend cap that's fully adjustable and American made. Call 1-800-97-TRUTH. Quit chewing tobacco with mint snuff, all mint chew. Mint snuff is made from mint, not tobacco. Ask for mint snuff at grocery and convenience stores.